Four toxic habits can make people lose respect for you. These aren't just harmless quirks. They can seriously undermine your reputation and damage your relationships. You might think everyone has bad habits, and you're right. But the habits we'll discuss today are particularly harmful because they affect how we interact with others. They can ruin promising friendships or professional relationships quickly. I'll share some of my own experiences to give this topic a personal touch. Trust me, I've made plenty of mistakes and learned a lot from them. These stories are raw and honest, but sharing them will help us all grow. By recognizing and overcoming these habits, we can start living with dignity and respect. We'll draw on the teachings of Stoicism, an ancient philosophy offering timeless advice for living a virtuous and fulfilling life. Stoicism is about more than just enduring hardships with a stiff upper lip. It's about cultivating inner peace, integrity, and resilience. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and let's dive in. Habit number one, gossiping. Let's get real about gossiping. It's a habit almost everyone indulges in, but no one wants to admit. I used to be a huge gossip, and it took a lot of painful lessons to realize how damaging it was. When I was in college, gossiping was practically a sport. My friends and I would sit around for hours, dissecting every detail of other people's lives. At first, it felt harmless and even fun. It made us feel connected like we were in on some exclusive secret. But gossiping is a toxic habit that can destroy trust and respect. Here's a story I'm not proud of. There was this girl in our group, let's call her Emily. She was a bit different, quirky, introverted, and didn't always fit in. One day I found out she had a crush on a guy who was way out of her league. Instead of keeping that information to myself, I shared it with my friends. We laughed about it and the story spread like wildfire. It wasn't long before Emily found out what we'd been saying. The look on her face when she realized her personal feelings had become a joke was heartbreaking. She stopped coming around and eventually left the group entirely. At the time, I brushed it off, but deep down, I knew I'd crossed a line. The Stoics, like Epictetus, teach us to focus on our own character and not meddle in the affairs of others. When you gossip, you're wasting time and poisoning the well of trust. Keep silent for the most part and speak only when you must, and then briefly. Gossiping erodes trust. When you engage in gossip, people start to wonder what you say about them behind their backs. It creates an environment of suspicion and betrayal. I learned this the hard way when my own words came back to haunt me. Another incident happened at my first job. I had a co-worker, let's call him John, who was incredibly diligent, but a bit of a loner. One day, I found out through the grapevine that John had a pretty serious health issue. Instead of respecting his privacy, I told a few colleagues, thinking it would make for an interesting conversation. John found out, of course. He confronted me, not angrily, but with a look of deep hurt and disappointment. He told me that he trusted me with that information thinking I would be discreet. From that day on, our working relationship was never the same. I had lost his respect and trust, and it was entirely my fault. This experience taught me a critical lesson, respect other people's privacy. Everyone has their battles and vulnerabilities. By turning someone's personal life into fodder for conversation, you not only disrespect them, but also reveal a lack of integrity in yourself. The Stoics believed in uplifting and constructive conversations. Instead of gossiping, focus on positive dialogue that builds people up rather than tearing them down. Remember, if someone is willing to gossip to you, they're just as likely to gossip about you. Habit number two, being unreliable. Let's talk about being unreliable. This one hits home for a lot of people, and it's a habit that can seriously erode respect. Reliability is foundational to any relationship, whether personal or professional. If people can't count on you, they'll quickly lose respect for you. I've got a personal story about this. In my early 20s, I was known among my friends as the flaky one. I would make plans and then cancel at the last minute or just not show up at all. I thought it was no big deal. Life is busy, right? 
But one incident really opened my eyes. A close friend of mine, Sarah, was throwing a birthday party. She had gone all out, planning for weeks and organizing every detail. I promised I'd be there, but on the day of the party, I got caught up in something else and decided not to go. I didn't even bother to let her know until hours after the event had started. When I finally called her, I could hear the disappointment in her voice. She didn't say much, but I knew I'd let her down. Our friendship was never quite the same after that. She stopped inviting me to things, and we drifted apart. Being unreliable tells people that your word means nothing. If you say you'll do something, do it. If you promise to be somewhere, be there. It's about showing that you respect other people's time and effort. Another example is from my professional life. Early in my career, I had a habit of overcommitting and underdelivering. I'd agree to take on projects and then miss deadlines, often without warning. I thought my charm and excuses would smooth things over, but my boss wasn't amused. During a performance review, she laid it out bluntly. Your work is good when you do it, but your lack of reliability is a problem. People don't know if they can count on you. It was a harsh wake-up call. Reliability isn't just about showing up. It's about consistency and integrity. When you commit to something, you're putting your reputation on the line. Every time you flake out, you chip away at the trust others have in you. So how do we fix this? First, be honest with yourself about what you can and can't do. Don't overcommit. If you make a promise, keep it. Communicate proactively if something comes up and you can't follow through. Show that you value other people's time as much as your own. By being reliable, you earn the respect and trust of those around you. It's a simple but powerful way to strengthen your relationships and build a solid reputation. Habit number three, interrupting others. This one is controversial because so many people do it without even realizing it. But let's be real. Constantly interrupting others is a huge sign of disrespect. It says, what I have to say is more important than what you're saying. It's a habit that not only frustrates people, but also makes them feel undervalued and unheard. I used to be a chronic interrupter. I thought it showed enthusiasm and intelligence, but in reality, it showed a lack of respect and patience. Here's a personal story that drove this point home for me. In one of my early jobs, I was part of a team that had weekly brainstorming sessions. I was eager to impress, so I'd constantly jump in with my ideas, often cutting people off mid-sentence. I thought I was being proactive, but my coworkers saw it differently. One day, during a particularly intense meeting, my manager stopped the discussion and addressed me directly. You need to let people finish their thoughts, she said bluntly. You're not listening. You're just waiting for your turn to speak. I was embarrassed, but it didn't end there. After the meeting, a colleague pulled me aside and said, do you even realize how dismissive you come across? It's like you think your ideas are the only ones that matter. That hit me hard. I didn't see myself as dismissive, but clearly that's how I was perceived. Interrupting others is more than just rude. It shows a lack of self-control and respect. The Stoics valued listening and understanding over speaking. Seneca advises us to be patient and considerate in our conversations. I remember another incident vividly. I was out with friends at a bar, and one friend was sharing a deeply personal story about his struggles with anxiety. Halfway through, I jumped in with my own experience, thinking it would help him feel understood. Instead, he looked at me and said, can I finish? The mood shifted instantly. What I thought was empathy came across as hijacking his moment. That night, I realized something crucial. Listening is more than just hearing words. It's about being present and allowing others to express themselves fully. By interrupting, I was undermining that process, making it about me rather than them. To break this habit, practice active listening. When someone is speaking, really listen. Don't just wait for your turn to talk. Give them the space to express their thoughts completely before you respond. It's a simple but powerful way to show respect and build stronger connections. Remember, 
interrupting signals that you think your words are more important than theirs. It's about valuing others' contributions and fostering an environment of mutual respect. The next time you're in a conversation, challenge yourself to truly listen. You might be surprised at how much more you learn and how much more respect you earn. Habit number four, complaining. Complaining is a habit that's not only annoying, but also deeply corrosive. It's one thing to vent occasionally, but constant complaining can turn you into a negative force that people want to avoid. This habit can drain your energy and the energy of those around you, leading to lost respect and damaged relationships. I used to be a chronic complainer. I thought it was a way to bond with people, to find common ground over shared grievances. But it didn't take long for me to realize how destructive this habit was. Let me share a personal story. A few years ago, I worked at a job that I found incredibly frustrating. The workload was heavy, the management was disorganized, and I felt undervalued. Instead of looking for solutions or ways to improve the situation, I complained constantly to anyone who would listen. My co-workers, my friends, even my family. They all heard about my endless grievances. At first, people were sympathetic. They'd nod and agree, offering their own complaints as a form of solidarity. But as time went on, I noticed a shift. People started avoiding me. Conversations grew shorter, and I wasn't invited to after-work hangouts as often. The final straw came when a close friend told me, I love you, but you're becoming really negative. It's exhausting to be around you. The Stoics believed in focusing on what we can control and accepting what we cannot. Complaining constantly keeps you fixated on the negative, which not only affects your mindset, but also how others perceive you. It's a sign that you're more focused on problems than solutions, which is not an attractive quality. Another experience that drove this home was during a group project in college. One of my teammates, let's call him Mike, was a relentless complainer. Every meeting, he'd go on about how unfair the workload was, how incompetent the professor was, and how pointless the project seemed. His negativity was contagious, and soon the entire team's morale plummeted. We were all fed up and just wanted to get the project over with rather than putting in our best effort. Seeing this from another perspective was eye-opening. It made me realize how my own complaining had likely affected those around me in similar ways. I decided to take a different approach. I started practicing gratitude and focusing on solutions. Instead of complaining about my job, I began identifying specific issues and looking for ways to address them. If I felt undervalued, I sought feedback on how I could improve and made a case for a raise. When management was disorganized, I took the initiative to streamline processes within my control. It wasn't easy and didn't change overnight, but the results were significant. People noticed my shift in attitude, my relationships improved, and I started earning back the respect I'd lost. I became someone people wanted to work with and be around rather than someone they avoided. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, subscribe, and share it with someone who might need to hear this. Let's strive to live better, more respectful lives. Until next time, stay strong, stay stoked.